Welcome to this introductory session on Mendeley. This presentation will cover the basics of what Mendeley is, how it can help you improve your research and writing processes, and how you actually use it. Mendeley is designed to help you to achieve three main goals. Organising your references by allowing you to create a personal library of materials and structuring it as you see fit. It can help you keep track of different papers you're reading by adding notes and highlights and by remembering where you had reached. Collaborating with others. Mendeley allows you to come together with other users to share references and to exchange ideas. You can also use private groups to share full text papers and to collaboratively annotate. You can use this functionality to work with people you see every day or use Mendeley's social features to find people with similar interests around the world. Discover. In addition to helping you discover new people to work with, Mendeley can also help you to find new research being published in your field and to recommend new reading based on the contents of your personal library. So what is Mendeley? Mendeley is free software, which is available across a number of different platforms. You can run Mendeley on your computer or laptop, your phone or tablet, and also access it from any modern browser. You can either download the appropriate app for your particular device, or use your web browser to log on to the web version. Mendeley's desktop application offers the most complete experience, allowing you to organize, collaborate, and discover, as well as use the citation plugin to cite as you write in Microsoft Word or LibreOffice. We'll cover this in more detail later on. The other versions, web and mobile, offer you the ability to access your references on the go, as well as making notes and annotations. Mendeley acts as a repository for your reference information. You can add papers to your library by importing PDF files stored on your computer or by retrieving them from other locations, like online catalogs such as ScienceDirect, Scopus, PubMed, or PLOS. You can also create entries for items that you don't have access to as PDFs by manually entering details. Materials you add to your library are then stored in the cloud for you to retrieve wherever you need them. It might be that you want to read a paper on the way home on the train, or you need to write a paper on your main computer. Mendeley allows you to retrieve the same resources with the same enhancements and annotations wherever you need them. Let's talk briefly about how the product works and what it looks like and how you might like to use it. The first thing you'll need to do is create an account via Mendeley.com. This is completely free to do and only takes a few seconds. You'll need a Mendeley account to log on to the different versions of the software. Once you've created your account, you'll be prompted to download the appropriate version of Mendeley desktop for your current machine. You don't have to do this right away, but it's a good idea to have the desktop application installed on your main working computer. This is how Mendeley Desktop looks on a Mac. The Windows version has a few cosmetic differences, but the functionality is essentially the same. This presentation uses Mac screenshots, but you'll notice the videos were made on a Windows computer. Mendeley Desktop offers the complete Mendeley experience. It allows you to build, maintain, and order your personal library. It also allows you to access reading and writing functions. We'll go through these in more detail later. When you first open the Mendeley desktop, you'll need to log on to your Mendeley account. This ensures that any changes you make are being made to your own account 
and will be carried across when you log on to different devices. Mendeley Desktop offers a three column structure. The left hand panel allows you to navigate through different options on your library. When you click on the different folders or groups listed in this column, different lists of papers will be returned in the main panel. In the screenshot, we have all documents selected, which means the main panel is listed, listing all of our references. The middle panel show, allows you to select individual references. Clicking on a reference listed here will display this document's details in the right hand panel. You will also select multiple papers to undertake bulk actions such as mass deletions or additions to folders. The right panel shows the details of your selected reference. You can also use this panel to modify the details by clicking into the individual fields. You should carefully check and correct the details displayed in this panel as ensuring accuracy here will ensure that your citations are totally correct. We'll go into the details of how the interface works in a few minutes. Mendeley Web is the version of Mendeley accessible via your web browser. You'll need to be logged into your Mendeley account in order to access it. The layout is similar to what we've seen for Mendeley Desktop, although it has been optimized for use in a browser. The same three column structure persists. We won't go into too much detail on Mendeley Web here, but if you're interested in using it, there's a dedicated guide available in the Mendeley Resource Center. So let's talk about how Mendeley can help you bring organization to your references. Firstly, I want to make the distinction between references and documents. Hopefully you're already familiar with both, but in this context, when we say document, we're referring to an actual file, usually a PDF version of a research paper. A document will contain lots of information. Many papers are many pages in length and contain thousands of words. They also contain the details necessary to reference the paper. Usually this is just key information about the paper, such as the author's name, title, publisher, and so on. Mendeley deals in both documents and references. It will take a document in the form of a PDF paper and attempt to extract the reference material in order to produce a reference. It does this by looking at the contents of the paper or by examining the metadata or detailed information which publishers include in files when creating them. You can then check and modify this reference data to ensure that Mendeley has produced the correct details. Ensuring you have correct reference details is very important. It is also important to realize that you can have a reference without providing a document. If you know the details of a publication, such as an author title, etc., you can still add it to your library and cite it, even though you don't have access to the PDF version. This can be useful when citing a book that you use in hard copy, for example. Mendeley also offers a number of other options for adding material to your library. You can find these by opening the file menu. You can choose to add individual files or the contents of an entire folder by browsing to the relevant location on your computer. You can opt to watch a folder which means that Mendeley monitors that location for any new items being dropped into the folder. If it finds a new document, that document will automatically be added to your Mendeley library. You can also easily import a library from other reference managers. So if you've tried out EndNote, Reworks, or another solution and find them not to your liking, you can carry, out, carry across your library to Mendeley easily. You also have the option to create a reference manually. 
which will allow you to complete a number of fields by hand. Let's have a look at the video I've created. There are a number of ways of creating a reference. We can create a reference manually uh, by just adding what type it is. So in this case, we'll say it's a book. Um, Add in the keywords, the edition, all the information that you have. And we can always go back and edit this at any time if we don't have information or we need to um, edit it to enhance it or alter it in some ways. So that's the manual entry. It also appears here. Another way of adding a reference is to do a literature search. So in this case, um, I'll just type in an arbitrary title for a book. Uh, uh, uh. And we'll grab that one. And we can press this button to save the reference. And that also will go into the area and we can see that don't make me think and also the last one here. Then if I want to add it to a folder, I can create a folder by pressing this button or here. And if I go back to my books, I can just drag it into the folder like that and if I click on the folder you can see they've been dragged across the green light indicates that I haven't read them yet another way to import uh, bookmarks is to bring them in as a file or a PDF document or to download if I look in my download folder for example I can see where I've imported a number of books and here it'll just actually do it this way add file go to the download folder and if I click on that bib text one it will import it so that's organization you can see here that I've also organized a number of folders for my own program and within that I've got uh, different modules and books and if I want to rearrange things, I can take my new books folder and I can make it a subfolder of creative writing, for example, or I can drag it from another area.